Yeah, so um, go to any temple there. Okay. Smallest of the temple there would have these elaborate chokhat, the mm. door frame and the door and uh, the carvings are really beautiful. Um, and uh, even the older homes that you go to. Now, the tradition is uh, s sort of getting limited to temples. Yeah. But uh, the older homes, such elaborate carvings. Um, so that is something that I've seen firsthand. <laughs> Uh, this is Dhriti from this day and we are back with another interesting episode of Spotlight and today I have Tanushri Singh with us. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Tanushri Singh, she is an assistant professor and she has written this amazing book which is called The Letter to Lahore which is published by the Duffville and it is a part of the Songs of Freedom series. So, and also before the interview we're talking about how you have come up with these amazing libraries and I really want to know more about that before we start with the interview because I'm a bibliophile myself. So if you could just tell me how it has been. Um, it started very organically. Okay. Just like any other bookworm, I, I also had a dream that I want to have a library at some point of time. And a friend actually sent two cartons of books. So those were the first um, lot for the library. Then we just, uh, it was purely through social media that we raised one a uh, full library in Faridabad that was the Amazing. first one and uh, we got space there in Kisan Bhavan they were very nice to us and they've given us a small room there where all sorts of books exist uh, then uh, we were building a mountain home in Tirthan Valley I went to the school I have this habit of randomly straying into schools and wherever I find children and I read to them so I went there with a book and the kids had never seen a picture book before that okay yeah so which was pretty shocking for me because uh, i guess that city mindset where you assume that they're that, oh of course it. books yes. everybody's read books and everybody's seen books. no one realized it's a privilege indeed. yeah and uh, they were uh, pretty taken in by that book and that somehow propelled me into setting up one Another library nice. there yeah so that just again organic and I uh, we were building a house uh, for ourselves which later on turned into a boutique stay for guests and everybody and there I literally um, just uh, squatted on a room <laughs> <laughs> and refused to give it up so that's a library now and I never hear the end of it but I don't care so um, um, the kids come there and they read that's nice. Yeah. yeah. So, like, there are a great bunch of kids that are coming regularly. Yeah. So, uh, it, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster after COVID. Yeah. Uh, but it started to pick up again. They would come. Initially, it was very difficult to get them in. Okay. They were very shy and yeah. uh, we were not. Entering into the yeah, house also. Yeah. yeah. So, the gates are always open and uh, then um, I literally lured them in with the uh, craft and yeah. activities and games and things like that and now they actually uh, put in requests for books that's nice so yeah. do you face an issue with the um, updating books and the donation process of it as well so i've been very lucky so far that's nice yeah so i get books they just appear literally they just, just like they appeared in our lives yeah they just oh i'm so lucky because and uh, whenever i've um, I also started a reading club in uh, the college that I was uh, posted at earlier and then again they just appeared. So the first thing I want to talk about the book is the setting of the story and including the time, the village of Sarchi, the geography and the daily lives of the three kids. Yeah. It paints a picturesque image. Could you provide more detail about these aspects? We've always travelled in the mountains. and. Uh, in fact, we would start out with a vacation plan which used to be elaborate and very ambitious. Like any travel plan ever? Yeah, yeah. So, let's go to Maldives would soon turn to Himachal. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, and, and uh, it was, I mean, both, uh, I've, I've been lucky that uh, me and my husband, both of us have had this thing for mountains. And uh, so, when we arrived in the valley uh, as tourists, um, we just fell in love with the place and that just looked feel just just felt like home yeah and we set up our home there and it was um after that that i started to obviously meet people and 
uh, really see how they live because when you go as a tourist you see a very superficial outer layer of how the life is yeah true it's only when you start living and, and uh, talking to them yeah and it was a conscious decision for us to be a part of the community yeah and uh, so it's been quite a learning uh, experience you know the the kids uh, that i've mentioned there uh, i've met them you know they they exist of course the names are different um the kids yeah. anymore so yes yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh, um sarchi is an actual village yeah and uh, it is as remote as it gets in fact uh, it's only a few years back that the bus started reaching there so okay. for that they had to trek down to the main town head to get anywhere so and uh, even today when you go there it's almost like you're in another time zone um the old construction they are there old homes women wearing traditional clothes um the whole community feel them doing everything together and you know it's it's yeah. it's very uh, homey yeah so that was very much there um then what else helped with the book was the stories that i heard uh of how they used to travel how the travelers even now to a lot of places there are no cars they have to trek um there are schools that the kids trek up to for 45 to minutes to 1 mm-hmm. hour yeah. even today that's that i'm you know i'm being conservative there because um there are schools which require much more of a walk so uh that all somehow just came together in the book okay that i also reflects in the book as well <clears throat> so the book explores the freedom movement from a children's perspective allowing them to discover new meanings of freedom and possibilities where did the inspiration for the young freedom fighter come from um uh, see that has been the undercurrent in all the books in the series yes right the songs of freedom um uh, from what i read uh seems to be based on that thought where you um see if you go back to your own school days hmm. uh the history lessons yeah. they are mostly focused on these prominent names there are these dates uh freedom fighters we are not really talking about what was a common person doing exactly. what did freedom mean to a child living in different states different parts of the world uh, sorry uh, parts of the country now when we specifically talk about himachal um this is something that i have heard time and again whenever we travel to the remote parts that a lot of them laughed it off also that you know we really didn't uh, their grandparents didn't really know what it meant uh, to be free because Uh, a lot of places were too remote for the actual yeah. british influence um a lot of places were anyway under uh, different uh, kings chiefs and yeah chiefs and uh, so they were anyway facing quite a bit mm. um so it was almost like there was a change in hand some things changed but more or less life remained the same so there were no questions as such being asked yeah a subtle so, way of suggesting yeah someone. so yeah so uh, that is something that i wanted to explore that's why the children are clueless as to what is freedom and what does it mean and why is dark chacha so um you know uh, sort Adamant of yeah uh, so um the idea is i think somewhere <clears throat> when the children read the book um the idea was to get them curious yeah. get them curious about the freedom movement because somewhere the stories will get lost true um i think i can safely say that ours was the last generation um who heard first hand stories from our grandparents yeah. of the partition of the freedom struggle right um these stories will not be there around the oral tradition will go so you will not have these personal tales anymore so this was more of an attempt to get the children to think to think not just about freedom um struggle as yeah. such but the whole idea of freedom what it means and um, what were their counterparts going through or are still going through in different regions of the country freedom outside the textbook definition yeah, of freedom yeah absolutely so it's very deep actually mm-hmm. and to give it out to kids to understand yeah. that it's we underestimate great. them yeah that's we true we underestimate children a lot i think they are more mature than we are uh, <laughs> yeah more open minded at yes. least yeah because um the society is still not imprinted there yeah so they they the wise flow very easily yes and they are not easily satisfied and i hope that stays yeah yeah okay moving on 
arts and crafts play an important role in the story. Mm-hmm. Can you elaborate on the wood carving tradition and the battus mentioned in the story? Yeah, so um, go to any temple there. Okay. Smallest of the temple there would have these elaborate chokhat, the mm-hmm. door frame and the door and uh, the carvings are really beautiful. Um, and uh, even the older homes that you go to now, the tradition is uh, sort of getting limited to temples. Yeah. But uh, the older homes, such elaborate carving. Um, so that is something that I've seen firsthand. And uh, the pattus are something which I've seen getting woven. So these are these. Uh, imagine a shawl which is mm. uh, much longer than your regular shawl. It it drapes around you and it and. I wear it in the winters there. Mm. Um, it's the warmest, most comfortable piece of garment that you can wear. You wear it above your rest of the garments. Um, and uh, uh, women uh, take a lot of pain in designing them. So the basic traditional way of making and design remains more or less the same. But the color schemes, the intricacy of the weave, that would uh, change and that would um, sort of reflect on your skill as a weaver. Yeah. yeah, and I don't think it's a part of the mainstream crafts and traditions that we talk about. It's not very, yeah, because mostly when you talk about Himachal, um, whenever we go there, I get requests for Kullu shawls. Yeah, get, get, get some <laughs> Kullu shawls. Uh, but it's so much more, so much more. So what's the difference between a Kullu shawl and the Pattu? Then? Pattu is a big, uh, as I said, shawl is a shawl. Is it like, like a, a miniature sari? Uh, yeah, something like that. Not a miniature, it's almost as big as that. <laughs> And uh, they drape it in um, somewhat a similar way as a sari, okay. but it's it's done very differently from it. It looks somewhat similar, but uh, the purpose is to just you know, um, the purpose is to keep you warm. But uh, the colors and the uh, way they do it, and then they use a a silver uh, a pin of sorts to tuck it in those yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm forgetting the traditional name for it, but it's again, it's a symbol. Of yeah. uh, your uh, wealth, and uh, the more intricate and heavier it is, the better you're doing in life. You know that sort of a thing. So it's very interesting to comfortable fashion. Yes, yes. <laughs> very. <laughs> At least some women are able to dress oh, comfortably. Yes. Okay. Uh, while the book focuses on the freedom movement, it also addresses other inequalities. We talk about caste and gender in the book yeah. um, through the lens of a ch- of a child. Do you believe this provides young readers with an opportunity to explore and contemplate their ideas? Absolutely. So I've had these really interesting experiences with the book when I did some sessions with uh, children across the city and in bookstores. And uh, we had this conversation and uh, what I would just play a game with them that I would read a sentence out from the book. You need to tell me whether this exists today or not. Is it true for today or not? Wow. Yeah. So when I read about the cast, all of them just shook their head. Most of them shook their head that no, this won't be happening now. So that it opens up a venue for a very uh, interesting conversation. You know that why don't you go back and observe more? Why don't you go back and uh, then one of the children I remember said that oh, it happens in villages, not in the cities. I said okay. So why don't you go back? And ask your parents if they've ever separated utensils. Yes, for your helpers. And, yeah. and if they haven't, do they know of anyone who yeah. has? So uh, it gives. I think it. It's very important that we talk to children. Exactly. Yeah, and there is no age. A lot of people think that oh, it's too early. Their world needs to be rosy. Well, no. Uh, they are living in the real world, and the sooner they know what goes wrong, the sooner they'll be able to take control. The discrimination and racism is so ingrained yeah. that from the moment they take their first steps, it's already there. It's there, and they don't even realize it that it's, you know, existing this is discriminatory. In their, yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they think it's normal to have separate utensils, yeah. or for you know, the housekeeper or the person who's helping us with our homework or the work at home, they are like sitting not on a table but like it's a very right around the corner. it is extremely uh, exactly so it's. Just yesterday, I had this long discussion with my helpers there. I saw these two nice, different-looking mugs in the kitchen. I was like, these are not mine. Where did they come from? I said, we get, got them from upstairs, their home, um, because uh, for our tea and all. I said, oh, our mugs are not good enough. <laughs> so they were, they actually froze. No. Uh, and uh, the boy actually told the girl, that, see, I told you. I told you that you could have just 
take an any mug you were the one who insisted let's get this down and now tum jawab do and uh, i was pretty shocked because they hesitated yeah and this is in a household which has zero rules so see where this is coming from you know on both sides it is um very easy to say oh it doesn't exist oh i don't practice it but it does. but it it is there you have to literally fight it every minute of the way and then it's accepting also you Accept know accept it yeah that over it here exists, it's, yeah. it's it's equality but you have never been able to face that equality yeah. so you feel very hesitant to even take it exactly. you think that it's not yours to take exactly exactly and it exists today um in back home in himachal um it exists in your face and uh, there is very little you can do about it um you can write books like this you can leave questions there uh which i try and do um you can question the children leave the questions with them so let them find the answers answer. yeah the next question is local traditions add another dimension to the story could you tell us about the uh, shri rangarishi if i'm shringarishi yes i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> uh, and other prevalent local traditions in the area so um religion is a big thing there okay and initially when i went in fact i used to be again the city mindset you are in a hurry for everything and uh, suddenly all work would be at a, a standstill because a devta is coming okay yeah uh, it's quite a sight it is very interesting to watch uh there is a palki and uh, the devtas there uh, move around a lot i call them a touristy bunch <laughs> <laughs> they move around a lot they go to uh, different temples and uh, so the the head priest actually conveys that oh devta wants to go to xyz temple so there will be a proper procession going in there and so they keep moving around the temples the area that uh, we are in and the area where sarchi is set the main devta that they follow there of course there are different goddesses and uh, you know uh, sub gods that there are there's a proper hierarchy there but um, shringarishi is one of the stronger so to speak gods there okay and an interesting tradition is that they have these um, offering points um, uh, a, a sacred space so to speak on different treks you'd find if in case you've been to himachal you'd see them or if you go in future look out for them you'd see these um, um places where there's a lot of iron things offered from um, horseshoe to uh, bicycle chains to anything iron yeah and the first time i saw it this is some twisted form of art because yeah. <laughs> I mean, right from <laughs> knives to everything so that is the form of offering for shringarishi so uh yeah the offering the, is iron based iron so yeah, any kind of loha. iron yes so they offer there which was again you know very interesting so that's one then a uh, uh, lot of things is there a reason for that particular offering i'm sure there's a story behind it <laughs> and fact it's crossed my mind that someday maybe i'd collect these stories and they're pretty interesting when yeah. you yeah this so um for example if you go to vishnu devi so there's that bhairo baba ka mandir yeah. and the offering is literally alcohol over there yes um then of course the tradition of food uh there's a, a meal called dham which is prepared by a special team and uh, that is supposed to be their uh, highest form of um, offering a uh, highest form of celebration so it's got multiple types of cuisine uh, or types of dishes in that okay um, and uh, there's an elaborate uh, tradition behind it and uh, rituals behind preparing that so it's it's quite a so is it like a part of a normal routine or is it done only during festivities or um it could be a personal festivity like if i'm celebrating something and okay. if i have to host a, a dinner or a lunch or and i say that okay i'm going to host this so mm. that becomes like a higher form of of uh, party so to speak yeah. <laughs> yes yeah. okay <laughs> yeah okay So while Lakshmi is at the forefront of the story my favorite character was Bhola. Yeah. Could you provide some insight into this character and the inspiration behind him? There's an actual boy like that. Okay. Yeah, so he used to come to my library and he was the quietest of them all. He's as tall as me now <laughs> and he talks. <laughs> But at that time he just won't talk. And uh, he would mostly whisper and uh, you know not really interact a lot. He's very quiet. that and uh, our chef's daughter so uh, bhola 
uh, is very much like the two two of them. Uh, Tiria has Tiria is her name, and uh, she started talking only now. She would just freeze in front of strangers. She would freeze, and she would talk non-stop in front of her uh, mum and her brother and her father. Rest of us were we we were walls. You were not part of her bubble. No, absolutely not. And it's so. But then I've seen her journey of kind of opening up and. Yeah. Um, these two were also called names. Um, people would casually say, hey, Munga hai, you know, Mungi yeah. hai, you know, things like that. So how would a child deal with that? And she would be furious. She would not express it then, but then throw a full on tantrum when she was home. So those were behind Bhula. Okay. Yeah. Um, Samuel Stokes. Yeah. Though not physically present, is the key character of the plot. Can you discuss his enduring legacy? Uh, I again. Uh, this was uh, in Court Guard. Um, I stayed at a place called Grandma Stokes. Okay. And uh, so the name intrigued me. That Stokes is a very unusual name for a beer, Airbnb. And yeah. I got talking to the owner Vinay, and he is the great grandson. If I'm yeah, great grandson of Stokes, and he told me a story that you know um, we mostly talk about Stokes as a uh, father of the apple yeah. revolution in Himachal but there was so much more to him and uh, he was the only American imprisoned for sedition during the freedom struggle he was an American fighting for freedom that that really in fact that is what got me really interested that here's this 21 year old who comes here stays here uh, decides to make this his home in those times I mean even now when we move from the cities to the mountains we find it a very huge change yeah. now take it back almost almost more than a century yeah and uh, uh, at that time to come from america Plus settle the down, language barrier yeah he learned he yeah. learned the language and uh, he uh, gave up his western clothes because he saw that as a barrier that people were not talking to him or not really communicating because of that took on the indian attire and uh, um, the way he participated in the freedom struggle with his own thoughts the way um, uh, that was really something you know uh, he was a big fan of uh, Gandhi but he also disagreed on yeah. things and uh, you know he made it known uh, so that that was very interesting and that's exactly what I think we somewhere want to also bring forward that freedom struggle was not a linear movement yes exactly. You know, it was there was there were a lot of dimensions to it there were people agreeing disagreeing and yet the vision was the same. Yes. So, uh, and for a person to have smuggled apple saplings and pillows, and that forming the actual backbone of the state in terms yeah. of economy is something. So, from going as a stranger to someone yeah. belonging to yeah. the land. Well, I think he's not been acknowledged as much as he should, should have, been. have been. Yeah. 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 I hope this book helps people to I hope finally so. acknowledge Yeah, him. I hope so. At least, I hope that the kids get curious enough. Uh, so someone said that, oh, you should have written more about Stokes in the book. But that is not the point. I want them to get curious. I want them to look it up, to go find out books about him, go read up, research more. You know, let's not uh, give everything in one book it's and get, them, yeah, them. get yeah. them satiated just with that. Yes. Yeah. Great. This is the last question. Okay. Can you tell us a bit more about your upcoming projects? Now, this is the point where I just duck, <laughs> crawl out of the room and hope to die. <laughs> Why? Uh, well, uh, I don't know if writers are that organized. Um, I can understand. Yeah. There are uh, quite a few thoughts in my head. Um, hopefully, they will be on paper soon, but I really don't know what will shape up. Yes. I think that's the part of being in a creative process. Yeah. It comes when it comes. The dreaded question. It yes. comes when it comes. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much, Tanushree, for talking with me today. It thank was a you. really great conversation. And you, all of you can buy the book, the letters to the heart uh, in your nearest bookstores. And also it's available on Amazon. And it's a great book. You should not miss out. Even if you are an adult and you think it's a children's literature, it's not. It's for you as well. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you.